Hello and welcome to the Super Coo Club! Hooray! I am Andrew. And I am Ben. And I'm wearing a feather. Why are you wearing that flamingo's feather, Ben? It's a big mystery. Oh, I see what you did there. Today's episode is all about secrets and mysteries. Uh, I don't even want to ask where you got that pink feather from. It does look very fancy though. I, <laughs> <imagine>. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Hey, in today's episode of the Super Coo Club, we are going to be uncovering some real pigeons' secrets. And later on, we're going to be drawing, learning how to draw frillback pigeon. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to show everybody how to write a mystery story. We love solving mysteries here at the Super Coo Club. I'm going to show you how to create your own. And I'm going to show you using this egg. Mystery to be solved later. But first, news and coos. Mm -hmm. News, news, news and coups. News, news, news and coups. Ben, the news right now is that secrets are so important to a real pigeon story and lots of stories actually. That's right, and it keeps things really interesting and exciting. Yeah, so as you're reading a real pigeons book, you'll notice that there are lots of characters who, as the story goes on, they reveal their secrets or they might try to hide a secret from somebody. Uh, it happens all the time. If you've, in fact, if you take Real Pigeons Peck Punches, the brand new book, uh, and the very first story in uh, Real Pigeons Peck Punches, which is called Riddle of the Cat's Eye, very mysterious title, Ooh. you'll notice that there's lots of secrets in this story. For example, Grandpowder, the head of the Real Pigeon Squad, has a secret in this story. Uh, because the, the mystery in this story is that somebody has stolen an emerald from a museum. Uh, and Grandpa's secret uh, is that he has swallowed the, oh. the emerald in question oh, no. and it's inside his crop in that big bulb underneath his beak. Yeah. And he coughs it up and the other pigeons go, well, hang on a second, isn't that the emerald? Yeah. <laughs> um, and another big secret that appears in Real Pigeon's Peck Punches is Barb Pigeon, who is on the back cover, has a really big secret. Will we find out what that secret is? I don't know. There's a little black feather that's kind of dropping from, from her neck Ooh. that kind of gives away a bit of a clue as to what might be going on with Barb. Yeah. We're not going to say any more no. here. Uh, but it's not just characters, Ben, that have secrets. Sometimes places have secrets. For example, I mentioned that the museum that the emerald was stolen from is not just any old museum. No. As the story goes on, we discover that it's actually a cat museum. Yeah, and it's so spooky and dark and um, mysterious and I love all the really weird things that are inside the museum. Yeah, there's ancient scratching posts and lots of kind of like uh, statues showing off the history of cats yep. like uh, Cleocatra's yep. in there. And then there's the mummy. Uh, there's a cat mum mummy and it's called Meowy Mummy and it's just bandaged up with toilet paper. <laughs> Cats love toilet paper and of course this cat museum is the scariest place to be for a pigeon And Ben, I reckon that we could maybe show everyone uh, at home exactly how you give a character a secret And how it can be used to make the story really interesting Awesome, let's do that To show you how Ben and I work on secrets and build secrets into stories We're going to play a little game now where we challenge each other Oh to come up with a dark secret for uh, a bird that we've never ever seen before. Okay, we can do that. All ben, right. why don't you why don't you show me a photo of a bird? Dig up a photo of a bird. All right, here's the first image. It's a blue parrot. Look at that parrot. Ooh. Okay, so I need to work out a dark secret for this parrot to have. Yeah, you do. Anyone watching at home, what do you think? What dark secret could this parrot have? Hmm, I wonder if maybe it's dark secret is that they're not its real feathers. <laughs> I wonder if that parrot is actually red underneath, but has been, <gasps> has like a long time ago, stole a peacock's blue feathers, oh. sticky taped them all to his body, and has just been <laughs> leaving them there and pretending like he's a beautiful blue parrot. Bad parrot, bad parrot. Okay, Ben, I've got a photograph for you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send it to you now. Let's right. bring up this photo. This is a shoe bill. Oh. What might this bird's dark secret be? Wow, that is a really cool bird. I know, I know. It's because we can't see its legs. So the big secret for this shoe bill, the big dark secret is it steals clown's shoes. So it's actually wearing shoes, but we can't see them. <laughs> 
in the grass. That's that's hilarious. I mean, right. The shoe bills look so evil. I wouldn't be surprised if they have many, many dark secrets. Um, all right, one more. Ben, why don't you send me a photo? Maybe like a really scary, dark, evil looking bird that has oh. many dark secrets. I'd, yeah, I'd love yeah. to be really creative. I've got a really good okay. one. Are you ready? It's really, really yeah, scary. Ready. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's scary. a duckling. <laughs> Okay, actually, actually, I like this because the characters that look the least scary are often the ones yeah. that have the darkest secrets. Yeah. So I'm thinking that this duckling likes to sneak up behind people and push them into swimming pools. <laughs> That's <laughs> look so at mean. It. If you look closely, <laughs> if you look closely, that duckling looks super evil. So there you go. You can see how giving a dark secret to a character can really get a story started. It's time to hear from you. Let's have a question from a Real Pigeons fan. Hi, Andrew and Ben. My name is Heath. I am seven years old and from Melbourne. I have a question for you. Does Andrew write the book and then send it to Ben to illustrate? Or does do you work together? Thank you. Thanks, Heath. That is a really good question. How do Ben and I work together on these books? Uh, we do a, a little bit of both. We do have periods where we work on it by ourselves. So whenever I'm writing the first draft, the second draft, the third draft, I'm working by myself, writing in my study um, and not talking to Ben, really. I'm just trying to get it down on paper myself. And Ben, you have periods where you just work on it by yourself for a long time as well. Yeah, I do. Um, later on, once the story has been a bit more finalised, I will go away and um, work on it by myself a lot. But throughout the whole process of creating the book, Andrew and I talk all the time. We're always talking about how things are, are going, where a picture is going, where text is going. So it's a lot of back and forth. It's great because it means that we can be creative in our own time, but also collaborate and, and be creative together, which yeah. is the best of both worlds. It's so fun. Yeah. Hooray for teamwork. Let's get back to those real pigeons because I believe you're going to show us how to draw one of them. Yes, let's go draw Frillback. It's time to find out how to draw a real pigeon. Hooray. And today we're going to learn how to draw Frillback Pigeon. Now, she is actually quite hard to draw, so let's all be patient and take our time. Okay, so what we need to do first is draw Frillback's face. We need to make sure we draw the little white jelly bean under one eye. We're going to draw a little hill between her eyes. Then we're going to give her a nice smiley beak like this. Frillback's neck is like waves of the ocean. There we go, there's our frill back. She's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna give her some eyebrows, like this. Let's give her some muscles. One and two, one and two. And then nearby, you have to draw a line going back down like this. Whoops, that's going off the page, down to the body. Now her hands, they are going to be like this, because she's nice and strong. Next thing you have to draw is her body. Two lines like that. Her legs are four lines. Now we join them together in the middle like that. And there we go. We have got some legs. Frillback's feet are quite big. And she has four toes. One, two, three, four. Next we need to add a tail. Now Frillback's tail is actually quite long. Here it is, up there at the side. We're nearly there. One more thing to do. Add all the frills and swirly feathers. One, two. A zigzag in the middle like that. Now lots of swirls. Oh yeah, this is my favorite part of drawing frillback is putting all the swirls and curls on her wings. And there we have it. You've got your very own frillback pigeon. I went all right. Wow. Not too bad, not too bad. That's very cool. If you would like to practice drawing frillback, Ben has got some how to draw frillback activity sheets that you can get on the Real Pigeons website. Uh, but beautiful job, Ben. That frillback is strong and beautiful. So a perfect frillback. And now it's time to get serious with a Real Pigeons challenge. Eee. 
There are lots of mysteries in the Real Pigeons books. There's constantly things going missing and being stolen. We've had uh, missing breadcrumbs in the park. We've had a stolen vulture's nest. Uh, we've even had uh, somebody pranking seaside animals by the beach. Uh, so many mysteries to solve. We love making mystery stories and um, asking questions of readers. Try to work out who the, the, who the criminal is, who the mastermind of this plot might be. <laughs> and now the challenge is over to you because the Real Pigeons challenge this week is to write your own mystery story. It can be a little bit tricky, so Ben and I are going to show you some of the key things that we think about when we're writing a mystery story. Now Ben, the first thing of course that you need to have is a mystery. What is the mystery? Let's come up with one right now. Let's tell a quick story and the mystery is going to be who has stolen an egg from a magpie's nest? Oh. So, can you draw a little magpie there for us? Yeah, okay, I'll draw the nest. Here's our nest, there are no eggs, and we've got a sad little magpie up the top. Oh no! Now when we're writing a mystery story, often the next thing that you read about when you're reading a mystery story is uh, some of the suspects who might be around, or maybe you'll kind of come across some clues. But whenever I'm creating a mystery story, the next thing that I think about is what is the solution? I want to know the mystery, and I want to know the solution. So, I think I was talking before about an egg helping us to oh. write a mystery story, and this yeah. egg is a little bit like that lost magpie's egg, and I'm going to show you the solution right now. This is going to be the solution to our mystery, Ben. <laughs> oh, wow! That's, that's so cute! The reason that I've drawn a face on this little egg is that uh, the egg, the solution to this mystery, is that somebody has come, come across this egg that's fallen out of the magpie's nest, thought it was a rock, and turned it into a pet rock. The slightly <laughs> strange, uh, hard to guess solution to our mystery, and you always want your mysteries to be a little bit hard to work out, somebody is going to turn that egg into a pet rock because they don't even know that it's an egg. Let's yeah. look back at that magpie and the nest because the next thing that we need to do, Ben, is yeah. spot, some, spot some clues, some suspects around the place. Maybe we've got, oh, what kind of animal likes to eat eggs? Oh, maybe a lizard. Um. Okay, so I'm going to draw a lizard. Okay, so... Yeah, let's draw a little li lizard. Now, of course, you and I know that the lizard is not actually the culprit here. The lizard isn't going to steal the egg because the solution is just that somebody found the egg on the ground and turned it into mm. a pet rock. Let's have one oh. other suspect mm. hanging around. Um, oh, no, let's do a duckling. A duckling. I mean, ducklings are so evil. What a great character to add in. Little fluffy duck. <laughs> awesome. I love it! Okay, so there are our suspects. We need to do one more thing, which is to explain how exactly this egg became a pet rock. Uh, mm. And I think that this only solution that I can think of right now, Ben, is that the lizard and the duckling are running a pet rock shop together. A rock shop! So there's the table. It's got a nice big drawing of some rocks on the table. And then we need to have some rocks on, on the actual table. There might be some crystals. We want to show that the solution to this story is that it wasn't the lizard eating the egg and it wasn't the duckling stealing the egg. The solution was simply that the egg fell out of the nest and that morning the lizard and the duckling found it, thought it was a rock, put a couple of eyes on it, and now they're selling it in their pet rock shop. There it is. It's a nice, happy, smiling rock. <laughs> I mean, egg. <laughs> So you yeah. can see how we've constructed that mystery by thinking about the mystery first, then the solution, and then going backwards and kind of filling in the gaps, putting in some characters and working out what might be going on. So good luck writing your own mystery stories. The only other thing that you'll need to think about is who is investigating your mystery. Ooh. I'll leave that one to you. Good luck working on your mystery stories. Uh, and share them online. Once you've written yes. a mystery story, take a photo, share it with the hashtag RealPigeonsChallenge. Ben and I have got a copy of Real Pigeons Peck Punches. We're going to give that away to one yeah. person who shows us their mystery story online. Uh, so get to it. Good luck, mystery writers. And next week on the Super Coup Club, we're going to be talking about our favourite topic, teamwork. Yay for yeah. teamwork. Yeah, Ben and I are a team. The Real Pigeons are a team. Join us next week. Join the Super Coup Club team. And we'll gather here and do it all again then. Until next time, bye! Bye, Andrew!
Bye, guys.